getting the most from your smartphone can be confusing and a frustrating process at times, but with just a few taps or tweaks, you can enable some settings to eke a little more from your Android, and we're going to show you how. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be notified about all our future uploads. Before we get into it though, it's important to note that just enabling some settings on your Android smartphone will not necessarily turn it directly into a powerhouse or even restore an older device to its former glory. That said, this could improve your daily experience and give you a little extra control in areas that you didn't know you had any. All of the features and settings within this beginner's guide though can be enabled on almost any and every Android phone out there. However, there may be some exceptions such as a feature being enabled by default. In those instances, we will note so that you know just why something isn't available on your device. It's a bit unfair to suggest activating developer options as something to immediately enable, but think of this as opening a door to yet more control over your device. Unless you have restored your phone from a backup that had previously had developer options enabled, then you will have to manually do this with each and every Android device you do own. To get access though, just head to settings about phone and then tap the build number seven times. Once you enter your pin or your pattern, this will access the panel. If you're wondering where the wider developer options or developer mode is though, just head into settings, system, and then you'll find developer options. From here, you can make adjustments to allow things such as OEM unlocking and access fun on more fun tools for device customization and tweaking. And it's a well worthy endeavor. Even if your smartphone has a high refresh rate display at 90, 120, or even 144 Hertz, some people might not even realize that your display itself might not be tuned to those levels right out of the box. Many smartphone makers leave screen refresh rates set at a default 60 Hertz, and this might be beneficial for long-term battery life, but when you're told your phone has a higher refresh rate, it can be a little bit annoying that it's not set to that. To do so, you'll need to manually enable the high refresh rate on your phone in some cases by delving into the settings menu. This can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but it tends to be in the same areas on most Android phones. To do so, or find out if you have the high refresh rate enabled, just head to settings, display, and you'll have an option li listed smooth display, screen refresh rate, or refresh rate, or even motion smoothness. From here, you should be able to set the screen refresh rate to that maximum setting. It's worth noting that on some devices, such as the Google Pixel series, you can actually also force enable the maximum refresh rate setting everywhere in the system within Android's developer options menu, which is why we've shown you how to enable that. To do so, just head to settings, system, develop options, and then force peak refresh rate. This ensures that your phone will stay at that 90, 120, or even 144 Hertz refresh rate constantly, but this may affect battery life. The age of social media saturation and being too interconnected can mean that you might wanna tune out certain bad smartphone habits at certain times of the day. Android though does have a neat focus mode that can in conjunction with the digital wellbeing mode help block out unwanted distractions on your phone. Effectively, by tweaking the settings, you can enable or disable specific Android apps on a timed or even daily basis, blocking access to social media during working hours or turning off things such as Slack notifications during your weekend downtime is gonna be a great addition. Focus mode even pauses notifications from these apps until your timed lockout ends, making this a great way to disconnect without feeling overwhelmed or even deleting apps temporarily. Android is constantly adding options for enhanced on-device privacy, but so long as you have a phone running at Android 12, you'll actually be able to get more location-based controls. This includes the ability to enable the usage of approximate location data when using an Android app that requests your global positioning. The first time that you run an app that requires or requests your location, you will see a pop-up with a small animation that will showcase the differences between precise and approximate location data. That said, if you already have given apps access to your location, then you can head to settings, location, select any app with location access, and then toggle use precise location. Currently, this option is only available on Android 12, but you can still prevent apps from tracking you all the time by adjusting the location permission to allow only while using the app. This ensures that you're not tracked when you're not actually using an application. Not every app on your smartphone needs to come directly from the Play Store, and not all apps from outside of the Google's official storefront are gonna be nefarious. Some popular apps, such as third-party launchers, including NetLauncher, for instance, 
require extra plugins to get that full experience on your phone. That often means that you'll need to grab an APK file from an outside source, and in turn, that means you'll need to enable the unknown app installation setting on your Android device to access them. And while Android does let you control just which apps can install unknown applications, it's important to only get APK files from reputable or trustworthy sources. And while that might seem obvious, there are numerous online repositories that can and may not be responsible. Normally, you'll get apps from a web browser, but this will work with any application on your device. And to adjust this, just head to settings, apps, head to the browser or application you want, install unknown apps as the toggle, and then enable that. Alternatively, you may also see a pop-up when tapping the downloaded APK from a browser, for instance, prompting you to enable the setting to install an application. Being able to instantly disable all of the sensors on your smartphone with a single tap is not gonna be useful to everybody, but it's still great for even added privacy and that extra peace of mind. We're still not sure why Android hides this toggle to block access to your microphone, your camera, GPS, and more within the developer options though. Unlike adding just another toggle to your quick settings panel, you will need to do a few things here first. Head into your settings menu and with developer options enabled, head to developer options, then quick settings developer tiles. In here, you'll find an option called sensors off. Once you toggle this, you can now expand the notification shade and tap that edit button. From here, you can actually add the sensors off toggle to quickly disable the microphone, camera, GPS, accelerometer, gyroscope, and other hardware sensors on your phone with just a single tap, which is great, like we said, for that added peace of mind. Watching videos on your phone in noisy environments or even in foreign languages can be a tricky endeavor. And thanks to Google's continued efforts to improve Android accessibility, the live caption feature offers real-time closed captions to any plain media to most devices running Android 10 or higher. It's up to the manufacturers though to implement it, but it should be available to most video content if you have a device running Android 10 and higher, as we mentioned. This feature does vary in location from device to device, but on most phones, you can enable a setting by heading to the settings menu, then accessibility, and then an option called live capture. You can personalize these captions to do things such as block, block profanity, and on Pixel and Samsung devices, tapping the physical volume buttons does actually bring up a quick toggle to enable or disable live captions quickly when you need access and you don't wanna dive directly into the settings menu itself. Apple fans do have the fantastic airdrop to share files quickly from phone to phone or phone to Mac, but on Android, we have nearby share. And while it's not quite as extensive in its abilities, the, it is a seamless way to send files from one device to another. It's also available on every single phone or tablet running Android 6.0 or higher and just needs to be enabled. To enable it, all you need to do is open settings, Google, then devices and sharing. And from here, you'll have an option called nearby share. Tap this and then enable the feature. From here, you can actually tweak these settings for the nearby share feature, such as giving your device a name, the Google account you wish to be linked to, and device visibility in your immediate vicinity. To use it, you can just share items from your phone, such as a photo, tap the share button, and there should be an option for nearby share available. You can also toggle this on and off with a quick settings toggle by editing and adding that to your quick settings panel. There are times when you wanna lock your phone instantly, and there are other times when you are happy to leave it unlocked, like when you're at home, for instance. Although this feature is activated by default on most phones, it's something you might want to adjust on your Google Pixel for greater flexibility. If you don't want your phone to lock instantly, all you need to do is just head to settings, security, screen lock, and then tap the power button instantly locks and enable or disable that as you see fit. And with this setting disabled, your Android phone will take a few seconds before it fully locks itself. That means you'll have a short window where tapping or accessing your phone does not require any pin pattern or biometric information. Enabling just keeps things as they were previously, and as soon as you hit that power button on lock your phone, you'll need to enter your pin and password to get back in. In terms of flexibility, it's a nice little addition, and it doesn't mean you're always having to put your fingerprint or even enter your pin to get access to your phone. As smartphones have ballooned in cost, people are understandably gonna go to great lengths to keep them protected and safe. And you might have a screen protector applied to your phone right now, but this can it itself reduce the responsiveness of your smartphone display, even with high refresh rates. It's also useful as well if you live in a country where you might wear gloves while using your smartphone and want that little bit of extra sensitivity and actual responsiveness. For that reason, it's probably good to know that you can increase the touch sensitivity of a display by opening settings, heading to display, and then increase touch sensitivity. It is important to note though that while this feature does help, it might not actually resolve major display issues you may be experiencing on your phone. 
and this is often dependent on the structure and even texture of your screen protector. So if you are still experiencing problems, the protector itself might be the issue. So there's 10 settings that we think you should enable right away on your Android phone. And we wanna know just what setting or even settings you simply have to enable right away on your phone. Is there something you literally can't live without? Let us know down in the comments sections below. But until next time, this is Damon with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.